Hi, I'm Stuart and welcome again to another Friday's Masterclass. Thank you for the suggestions and one of the suggestions today was how we, how we form a pitch roof to a flat roof. So we're going to be discussing situations on that. We've also thrown in a little valley detail here as well, which is the same scenario. So a little bit of detail on them valleys. And we've also thrown in a little inlet to show you how to form the inlet in as well. And I'll show you some little details and corners and how to cut everything in for this flat to a pitch roof. So moving over obviously to the pitch roof to a flat roof, the trim which is designed for this scenario is our F trim. Now our F trim is available in our product range, which you've got all the little details on the trims and they come in various lengths and widths. So you've got them in width now, this is the F300. They also come in 150, which is slightly smaller. Then we have a 600 and a 900 in width as well. So it all depends on the length of the valley, etc. But for standard dormer roof to a pitch roof, the F300 works really well with this. Now, your flashing itself comes on a roll, so obviously it comes in different lengths due to your stockage, but they come on a roll. And what you'll find with the trim, and one of the main things to highlight with the trim is it does have a shiny side to it, and it also has the dull rough side. It's always, every time, to the dull rough side. Okay, if you do ever mess up, put it shiny side, you will just have to just key it up with a bit of sandpaper. But always remember, if you can, to the rough side. On the trim that way then you get a better bond to the actual trim itself now the trim what we'll do is where well, you will have your pitch roof coming into your dormer maybe a dormer or a flat roof whatever it is on the roof what you've got then is you've got your tiles then you will have your, your breathable membrane what we need to do is try and lift that last row of tiles up if you can so we'll push the last row of tiles up if it is going to an existing roof and then we'll literally form the trim underneath to fix that little upstand so you don't need to put any kicker boards in fiberglass that in the trims are designed for expansion and contraction so it's always better to use obviously your trims on any of them details like so this if it's a slate you just need to just slide it up but if it's going to a new roof then obviously do it on before your membrane and then obviously your membrane will go over the top any water will still run down and exit onto that roof to start off, obviously, you do a rough side up and I'll start to just fix it down to the trim. Now what we will have as well here, you've got the gable end, which I'll show you how to cut that gable end, tie it in so it has a little soaker so all your trims will run, run off as it should do. To try and force it up to the batten, so literally cut your trim using your snips or your grind if you've got access to one and just keep it, force it up nice and tight up to that batten or roughly about 200mm up that upstand. And all we're going to do is fix it down to the depth like we do with all our trims. Just fix it down using standard cart nails. One at the end, one at the back. And then every 100mm, 150mm in between. Just to secure it down. So we're only ever fixing to that depth side. You see it in the product range or on the website, it's just a flat sheet but it will form to suit any pitch of the roof as well. Your gable end, we need to sit that down. Now you will have a tile here, and that last row of tile will be pushed up. So all we'll need to do is just mark off with your grinder or a pencil, and we're just gonna cut that trim along that edge. It will be a lot easier with the grinder if you've got one, but if not, you just use your tin snips, and we'll run that through, and that'll just fit along that edge. So, so that, that does come in various lengths. If you do need to, just trim adhesive and you can join your next one. And all we need to do is just bandage over that joint if it is a longer length than the actual trim itself. Now, so, this is where I'm going to put my A trim. So, I'm going to put two battens on here. So, I'm going to put my grounds on ready for my battens and I'm going to cut it in so I can get a nice cut side on there. So, obviously, we just need to put your battens on. We're just going to cut the angle of that just with your saw, so obviously just cut the angle of the roof so I'll cut that batten and hopefully that should fit in giving you your cut edge pushing that nice and flat to that actual tile obviously keep your battens in line so where we've got my B I'm going to put my one batten on which is enough as I don't need to get any gutter brackets on underneath there on this side so obviously secure this in so just using just your standard wood screws Position that along the fascia, 
making sure the battens are flush, it's not protruding that way so everything is in line and with the battens on you've then got a point to work to then with your trims itself it's secured in place. Now we need to cut another batten, now this one needs to be slightly lower so we're just going to sit that one down slightly lower so obviously just mark off again your angle of your roof same again, get your wood screws and then we'll actually just screw this batten and all we need to do is keep it in line on this corner but also step it down as well now by stepping it down what that does is it gives a little step ready for that corner so your trim doesn't sit up, everything sits and that radius of the trim doesn't kick it up we want the water to run off so we don't want to be interrupting the water and then we'll just secure that down so wherever you've got your gutter, your drip edge, two battens and wherever you've got your raised edge, just the one batten like so so your next stage now is the trim, so we're going to now form the trims ready so even though we've fitted our flat sheet We've then got a position for our battens, we can then go around with the rest of the trims on that dormer detail. So first of all, we're going to use the drip edge. And then what we're going to do, we're going to set that up. And then I'm just going to cut that angle again. So same again, I'm just going to guess it. You can use your sliding bevel or a roofing square if you've got one. But all we're going to do is just guess that edge and then using your tin snips just going to cut along that trim like so. So point to point, we're just going to cut it along. Hopefully it's right. And then that'll sit on like so. Obviously your battens are on, so you've now then got a point to work to for your battens. So I need to make sure I don't come past and I'm flush with my batten point. And I can just cut that and just discard that point. Using the sin snips again. Go on the lines that you've marked. Now obviously these trims come in 3 metre lengths. So as like previous said, uh, we've done with that, just make sure if you do want to overlap, just overlap your trim to a minimum of 50mm trim adhesive and then continue on till you reach the edge of the pattern. Like so. So what we've got then, you've got your trim edge that's fitted in. Obviously we'll have tiles underneath here and then tiles will sit on and any of that water will run straight off down that gable end and off into your gutter no doubt at the bottom but to fix your trim at this point now we're going to use the trim adhesive so we cured it trim adhesive and this is always required wherever trim meets any of the slate pattern and this just stops any uplift of wind so what we'll do is just a full continuous bead so all the way across that pattern you want to make sure we get a good bond to the pattern and then we can smudge that trim in place so we're going to fit it flush up, get it nice and tight, work from that corner and that will then stop any uplift of any wind along that top edge. Back to your, your clout nails, start at your corner, so make sure that that's nice and flush, you don't want to be kicking it off too much, you want to see that corner nice and flush, so just work from your battens, work from your points and then fix that down, so we're right and tight up to the batten, nice and secure and it's all level like so and then we can just fix the rest of that through same again every under 150 making sure that trim is nice and flat to the deck we don't want to be seeing any lumps in the trims as your matting will follow so nice and flat everything will run off so that's your drip edge done which is requires the two battens just for that radius as you can see there so when we come to our raised edge. What we're going to do is work to that batten line again, start from your corner. Now once that's in position, offer it up so you don't want to come past your corner and then just give a little mark underneath on that drip edge. What you'll find there now is you drip on top of drip, you've got that little excess on that curl and it just has that step detail. So we want to make sure that this drip edge lines in with this drip edge here and by doing that we need to just cut a little 45 degree angle along the bottom. Same again, along that top where the trim is, I like to just really just cut that little bit out here and that'll do is sit it in. What you've got there is another little step up of the trim. I prefer to just sit it flush, get all my trims 
in line like so. Turn the trim upside down, where you've got that marking, we're going to come from that furthest point and then you're going to just match them two points together, that'll give you that little 45 degree cut like so. So just with your tin snips, take that through and that's your little trim edge done. Cut that little parcel out to where it meets your depth and it doesn't then interact with that other trim. We'll just cut that through and I like to just get rid of that little sharp point there when I'm folding my matting over I don't want to be piercing that matting so just a little tip there just to take that corner off I tend to undercut this side so just slightly under 45 so once it's all cut you cut your 45 just off of that in place and what you'll find is that'll just sit in that'll sit on top of that drip edge there so all your drip heads all lying in in place now the trim's sat nice and flush to the deck, you've got no step ups on the trims and everything's nice and square, everything's nice and flush along that batten line. Full bead of trim adhesive to secure that trim to the face of that batten, all the way across, like so. And then we can offer the trim in place. I tend to go underneath to your drip, pop it on and then let it form itself. So get your drip heights right. Nice little press, flush to that batten, what we don't want to do is over push it. What you'll find is you'll kick in, you'll have a little curve on your corner. The idea is you want to keep them corners flush and straight, for what your customers will see. So again, fix it in, keep it tight and just secure that down to the deck. Start one end again, the other end and you can work your way in the middle. And then every 100, 150 mil, like so. Same again with any trims, keep it flush, keep it flush, any lumps, put an extra fixing in. And what we'll do now is we'll move over to the bandage stage. So I'll bandage this out for you and then I'll get it all laminated as well and then we'll show you a little poly detail. Put your PP on, so put your gloves on. Especially when you're working with any of the matting, you can get some loose fibres. But what we want to do at this stage is do all the preparation. So we're going to get all the bandage work cut to size. And we're also going to cut our main reinforcement matting as well. If your bandage comes on a 75 metre roll, as you can see, and it's 75mm in width. And what we're going to do is going to just reinforce over any fixings. So I like to, at that point there where all the fixings are, wherever the, the trims have been nailed down, we're going to just reinforce that area like so. So all the way around your perimeter, especially on your trims. And then we're also going to work in, if you've got any little details, so any, any little joints in your trims, any corners, anywhere where water can get in, we're going to seal them off like so. So I'm just going to put a little piece along the top and obviously around that joint there. And with a piece you do here, I'll show you how to do that with your corner. If you did do it with your bandage, all you're going to have to do is keep building it up building up so just one piece of the main matting works well on your corner where you've got an A lining up to a B. So obviously keep these to one side, stop them from blowing away on the roof or whatever you choose to do which works for you and then you'll come to your, your main roof, your main body of your roof which is the 450 gram and we also have 600 gram for like balconies, walkways etc. So roll your matting out, now there is a feathered edge and a straight edge on the matting, so wherever you've got an overlap on it, you want to overlap your feathered edge over the top of your straight edge. Any, any overlaps on your matting as well, you need to allow at least 50mm. But this is just a small piece here now, just get your, your standing out, and all we're going to do is just offer it in place, so we don't need to go all the way up this trim. The trim is fiberglass itself, so that was all we need to do is just go on at least 50mm onto that deck. We need to allow this trim to expand and contract we don't need to make sure we don't resin all the way up here and mat up which makes it a bit more rigid so just sit it onto your trim where it needs to be along the trims on the edge and then just cut it along the trim now you won't damage the trim all you do is just a little bit of a score line scratch it with your standing knife and then obviously where you've got your drip edge come back a little bit so you go half on your trim that way then, where we've cut that with a standing knife, we can then dress it in with our brush later on. You can see how it just forms in, like so. So obviously we need a corner for that. 
So if you've got any off cuts of matting, like so that, just cut yourself a little square, and then what that will do is we'll dress in around that corner. Nice and easy, we'll just work that corner in afterwards. So once you've got everything ready, you've got your matting, we'll roll them back up, and then we'll just put them in order on the roof. I've got all my detail work, all my bandage work, I'm now ready for my resin. So obviously your resin comes 10s and 20 kilos and you've got the coverage rates on them. So what we do say is make sure when you do open your cans, make sure you give them a good stir before you pour them into your bucket so the waxes and additives do separate. So make sure you just give them a good stir and then pour whatever quantities you want into your mixing bucket. Our mixing bucket's got all your, your measuring gauges on, so it's got your volumes there using 600, 450 and also your top coat. So all this information is on the bucket and then you've also got your hardener addition chart as well depending on the temperature around at the time. So what I've got there, if you look at the 450 gram, I've got literally just under two square meters. So every square is 1.5 kilos on the 450 on the 600, each square is two kilos. But we're working with the 450, so what we've got is two square meters here, which is more than enough for what we need. Once you put your liquid in, you'll then have a volume of where it lines up on the hardener addition chart, and that's determined on obviously your, your weather conditions as well, whether it's cold weather, hot weather, and you'll put the hardener in to suit. So we're going to go along this little cool area today. So we're going to go between 12 and 17 degrees, which it's got on here. We go down, and then you'll see exactly how much to put in. So with your safety dispenser, you have got your little increments on your top to pour your hardener into your, your mixing cylinder, and then just squeeze it up. Now I do recommend you put your, your glasses on, especially if you get outside and you've got windy conditions. Do protect yourself as it you can splash off etc but it's saying there I roughly need about 80 mil of iron so you just squeeze your your bottle so you've got your 80 mil marking following the bucket following the top and then just pour that in and then we'll give that a good stir when we're stirring just using a, a mixing stick and we're just going to give that roughly about 60 seconds stir making sure you get all the hardener mixed in and it is important you do mix it fully just to get it all working well. So give it a good stir, like so, and then we can start to apply it on. Now you will normally, you will do both of this, one in your bandage stage, you do a small mix with your bandage, and that way then you can then gauge on your working time, your gel times, etc. And then you can stick with that mix if you want the harder addition for when you do your main body. But obviously today I'm just going to put this on all as one. So with your roller, just with your three inch roller, which is what we work for the bandage as they fit the bandages really well, we're just going to give that a good coverage. So we want to make sure we put resin on the base, so get yourself a dripping roller full, and then we're just going to apply the resin to the base. So just go round, roughly about, get yourself a metre, two metres in front, along the deck. So put your resin on your base and then go back to your, your little detail work and then we're just going to place them over the top. Now one thing to remember with this is you don't want to be putting dry matting on dry matting so you need to make sure you're wet out as well so just stay on one piece, put it on the base, roll your matting out and then pull an even coverage over the top like so. What we don't want is to see any white areas or pale areas, you need to make sure you cover all the bandage then with resin. So give it all a good mixing, give it all a good working in with your roller. It shouldn't take long really to, to work it in, but we normally just give it roughly about a minute or so. And what you'll do is you'll probably be working in pairs. If one is wetting out, the next guy can follow up with a pot of roller as you're still wetting out, like so. But I'll just give that a little bit of time to soak in. You can see there's no white areas now like so that, it's all fully saturated, which is what we want. I'm not going to do any corners, any joints, so I've got these little areas here which are pre-cut. So just same again, soak them out, but what we do is we soak it out on the deck. The reason for this is we don't want to be stripping resin in, in them little tight areas. Just soak it up, and then literally just put it where it's going to be going. 
and then that's all we need to do for the time being. And what that does is it breaks the binder down in situ, it'll break it all down ready for us and then we can start to, to dress it in later on. So just work them in, soak them up and just get them over any joins, any overlaps in your trims. So next up now I'm going to use the corner which is an offcut of my main matting which I had pre-cut. Same again, we're going to soak this out. Just give it a good plenty of resin on and then lift it up as soon as and then we're just going to offer that in and around like so. So keep it flush to the bottom and then you can either fold it, which some people do, or just turn it. I tend to, I prefer to turn it. Same again, that'll just hold where it needs to be in place and I can start to, to dress that in. So moving on, obviously, once you've wet out, you can then go on to your power rolling, which is your most important tool. This is your three inch power roll. We also do larger ones, which I'll show you for the main body. But what we're looking to do with this is to make sure we consolidate it, but where the trim meets the deck and over them fixings, we're just going to give it a couple of passes, about four or five passes, and what you'll, what you'll see is then fibres start to disappear, you start to draw the resin through and obviously release all the them air bubbles in between as well. And you can see the difference there where you have a power rod, you can go whichever way you want, short way or just long way, four to five passes and you should come to that point there now where that squelching noise has fully disappeared like so so same again, work your way around your roof making sure you consolidate it making sure you spend your time nice and steady we don't want to be pressing too hard as you'll just feel force the bubbles back up because it's nice and steady until you get to, to that stage, like so. And you can see it nice and clear, you can start to see your fixings again. So again, work around, around your roof, oh, your, your guy's probably still wetting out, and then we'll get all that completely consolidated. Next up now then, is we're gonna dress in some little corner details, and this is best done with your little brush. And this works with your corner, on them little details, and we can really dab it in Get it in. Just get a little bit of resin on your brush. And what you'll find now is if it's given time to soak in, you'll see how easy that is to just shake and seal up. And you can feather your corners out, feather it in, really press it into where it needs to go. And then we know now that that joint is fully watertight. Everything will run off the fiberglass will bomb back to the trim when it's back on. And you get a nice seamless finish as well. Wherever you use your brush, you don't need to use your paddle roller. This does exactly the same thing. It just draws the, the earth through, saturates it, and obviously just gets it a nice bond to the trim and forms it around any tricky details. Same again, use your brush for your corner. So with your corners, the best bet to do it is with your brush, you start on your middle. So start on your middle, and what I'll do is I'll just work from that middle out, and I'll brush it and force it as you go on by. Just dabbing it away from the corner, you'll see it just start to tighten up and you'll see how you can feather it out, get a nice bond. So just bed it through, work one side and you can see how we're just pulling it and stretching it as you go. Same again, work it through, so just dab away, it's little sharp dabs, but just work it in as you go in and then just work them corners. And then what you'll be left then is a nice straight sharp edge on your corner. Everything's blended in and you can just tighten it up so there's no bubbles, etc. Like so. so. Your next up is, is your tissue. And the finishing tissue works well on your corners. So obviously if you've got a corner, corner that's seen, you can get a neat finish with what you've got, but obviously that's more fibrous. So this is a nice finer grade. So you can just overlap that and then you get a nice smoother finish. So what we'll do is just offer it up to your corner and we'll just turn it. So we'll just give it a nice turn. That way then we get a nice blended edge and then we're just going to overlap the bandage what we've just put on whilst it's still wet. And that'll just hold itself in place on the resin, like so. And then your best bet is to use your roller. Now you don't need any extra resin on it, it is only a fine tissue. And then same as we did before, the same scenario, we're just going to work it away from the corner. 
with our roller so we're just going to pull it and work it away from that corner talking on making sure it gets nice and tight and then you can see the nice smoother finish you can achieve on that front edge of your corner and you can fold that over but I find it easy just to just turn it that way then you just run it back over the top of your existing and then just feather in any areas and that will give you a nice smooth finish so once you're all bandaged you're then ready for your, your main laminate like I said before, I'd just do a small mix for your bandage and if you're happy with that working time then stick to that hardener addition. So I went on the, the cool column there so just stick with that if you're happy with that working time and you should be getting roughly about 30 to 40 minute working time then a further 30 to 40 minute curing time on top of that. So we're into your, your large roller so on your main body of your roof I use the 6 inch roller and we also have a 9 inch roller as well for any larger, larger details. But using your 6 inch roller and your extension pole, looking to get the roller fully saturated with resin. Now, the rule we have is obviously for one square meter, we need to use one and a half kilos of resin. To do that, we're going to put three dripping rollerfuls on the base. So, over one square meter, we want three of them. So, three dripping rollerfuls. So, three. It is slightly smaller than a metre this, to be fair, but free on your base. Then we'll roll your matting out. So we'll roll the matting out over the top. So it's always resin, mat, and then there's another resin on top of that, but we're going to put six roller folds in that. Working in one roller width across, and we'll just work that in up and down, we don't want to go side on, that's the next roller's job, so just put it on, sit it on, in the middle of your matting, and then work it in. If you have got any excess that you have, just go back over what you've already wet out, don't be trying to stretch it out over the next one. But this should take roughly six, but as long as you keep within that roller width with a dripping roller full, that's more than enough resin. And then that last roll. Same again, we're going to leave that to, to soak in and then we can come back and consolidate that as we did before using the larger roller. So you give it about two or three minutes and then we'll just literally just go over the top of it. Same again, using the large roller, it doesn't matter which way you consolidate it, which way you go, as long as you completely consolidate the whole area. Taking your time, not too quick. But all you see is the splashes going up the trims, which are then going to set. And then all we're going to do is need to, to sand them down later on. So you want to just make sure you take your time nice and steady, working it in. Four to five passes, making sure that that matting bedded down to the actual substrate. And then that telltale sign, what we're listening out for is that where it stops squelching. So what we're looking for when we're power rolling is obviously we want to get it nice and clear. You want to be able to just see all the fibres have gone. You can see the pattern of the board, see the outline of your trims. That's what we're looking for, making sure it's nice and transparent. Four to five passes until you get to that point there where that squelching's kind of disappeared. You can see the fibres have all gone. You can see it all nice and clear now. And that's fully polaroid and fully consolidated. Last nice little tip for you to finish off is where we did cut the matting with a Stanley knife and you can still see that sharp line. Best way to get rid of that is to just feather it out. So just with your brush, is just dress that in. Literally stretch your matting out and then you'll see that disappear. So that straight line up the cup with the knife then blends over to a nice finish. And you can do that the sides as well if you want, but obviously with a good paddle rolling, you'll eliminate that. Any brushes, if you can get to it, any little splashes, it's a lot easier to, to brush them off and clean them off now at this stage instead of sanding.
So that's your dart on the detail done. So that's your tissue on, or your lamina. Once that's fully cured now, a little sand down, clean with acetone, and then you can put your, your top coat on to finish. So you can see how you can key in and tie in on a dormer type detail, which is, like I said, one of the questions we do get asked, a little intricate details there, where you've got the gable end and your pitch roof, obviously meeting your flat roof. So moving over to the valley detail, obviously it's the same situation where you've got two pitch roofs coming in, and we're just going to form this in. So the best way to do this is with using the flat sheet, similar to what we've just done on the dormer, but we can do this on both sides of the pitches. Now if this is a larger valley, you've got obviously the 900 trim, and you've got 600 which works well. If you have got an OSB board, then you can just do the upstands using the pitch with the F300, run it onto the flat, and then you can fiberglass over, similar to what we've just done on the dormer as well. So you've got different scenarios, and I've also shown you how to cut out for your little pipe detail. So obviously, roll your, your trim out, the F300 trim again, and then form it up, your upstand, Bearing in mind, shiny side to the bottom, dull rough side to the top. Obviously I've got my outlet, so I'm going to need to, to cut that out. So with this outlet, I'm just going to mark it off with my pencil. So off it up in place, and hopefully I can see the base of where it needs to come out. And I'm just going to cut my trim through, like so, to about this point. And it is just guesswork, just cut it around roughly where it needs to be. So I've got that little round detail and I'm going to cut that out with my tin snips. And you see how easy it is to trim and cut. Now you don't have to be precise with this. What I'm going to do is just turn it around as you go, snipping as you go, until you get that nice circular detail cut out. Same again, send it up, right up to your, your batten line and your towels and send it right through. And obviously just make sure you flush to the front edge. I'll fix that down. We're just going to fix it through, line it through, and then we're just going to trim that down like so. Fix it to your deck. Now obviously bear in mind sometimes you might have a ply deck. Now if that's the case we don't want to be bonding to ply. The reason is it'll just delaminate from ply and obviously OSB board is the best to bond to. But if you are just nailing your trim on, then that's completely fine, because obviously you're nailing to the plywood and then the fiberglass is going onto the GRP itself. So if there is a plywood, you will need to cover it all with the trim just to get a better, better bond. So fix that down like a bond. So you'll do one side, and then you'll send the other one up, the other pitch of the roof as well. So send that through, same again. Shiny side up, er, sh shiny side down, should I say. And then obviously we could mark that radius where it needs to go out and that cut out again. Snips, tin snips again as we've just done, just work it through, as I said, just kicking it around. And then we're left with the trim up and just sit on. Now we've got trim on trim again, so we need to make sure we put trim adhesive on this and just offer it up where it needs to be. Put a little mark across, if you've got guidance where you need to, I'm just going to put a bit of trim adhesive along the edge of that there, just to secure it down. And then obviously I'm going to put further fixings in as well. So just pop it through. Following that roof, you can see how flexible it is for any picture roof. Even though it is a flat sheet, it is movable and it will bend to any pitch required. <laughs> Fix that down, keeping it flush. I'll try and keep that fixing close to this edge if we can, because we're going to need to bandage over all them fixings and that joint as well. If we put the fixings back in, we'd have to go over the fixings and the joint. So make sure you just put your fixings <laughs> close enough so we can cover them fix them joints. No, no, like so. We've still got a little kick up here. Now I'm going to be 
putting fiberglass around that outlet so I can put the next open fixing in there to secure it and around it if you want if you feel it needs it because we're going to be bandaging up around them areas as well so make sure it's fixed down flat like so and then we can move on to the bandage work so same as we did earlier just with your 75mm bandage I'm just going to roll this out covering all them fixings so we're going to get all the prep work done and that's job done me personally I do have a double bandage here or you can, one is enough, but you can double bandage it or put a little bit of matting on on that base as well. Obviously it's going to have a lot of rainwater going down these two valleys obviously into one area. So there's going to be a lot of water in here, so I do always tend to put double matting on any areas where it's going to be exposed to a lot of a lot of water. Well. But it is enough with just one if you want that. Obviously we're going to have to form in around that pipe work now. So I'll show you the process on doing, out, on doing an outlet, which is an inlet, should we say, which is similar to an outlet. All we need to do is just clean in the bandage, is we're going to go around the inside of the pipe. Now before we do the pipe, it's advised to just give it a little sand up, just scratch up the inside of the pipe. That just gives us a better bond surface, just keys it up slightly for us. And what this is going to do is going to wrap round and then we're going to do into the pipe with the PU, the trim adhesive. Now you want to wrap it all the way around so it goes in plus an extra 20mm. That one was a little bit shy, so I'm going to make sure it goes past it at least 20-30mm like so. To get that prepped up, and then what we're going to do now is just cut a series of squares. Now it all depends on, obviously, the width of your pipe will determine how many squares. And them squares are just going to go in your pipe and form it in and around. So it's going to go on the deck and into the pipe. So I'm going to cut about five or six for this piece. We want to make sure we overlap these as well. And cut enough here and then you've got them ready to go. Same again, preparation is key. So get everything cut to size. We'll get it all bent, uh, bedded on and sat in place before we actually do mix any of the resin. Trim adhesive, so we're going to need to stick to the plastic using the trim adhesive. Two full continuous beads on the bandage while it's dry. So for when you put your, your two beads of trim adhesive on, we're then just going to lightly roll that up and then we're just going to feed it into the pipe itself. Literally just pressing it firmly to the inside of the pipe with the trim adhesive. And then we can work that in like so, pressing it firmly, getting a nice bond to that inside of the pipe. Now the trim adhesive is a polyurethane base, so it does remain flexible, so we can stick and bond but also remain flexible. What you've got is fiberglass and plastic meeting, so that is going to expand and contract at different rates. So the idea of the trim adhesive will stick and bond but allow both materials to move at a different rate. So once you've bedded your, your bandage to the pipe detail, we're then ready for your resin. Everything's prepped, we're all ready for our resin. Don't get your PPE, so PPE on, your glasses, your gloves, and then we can go to the resin now at this stage. Same again, hardener addition following the hardener addition chart on the bucket. Apply the correct amount of hardening, and then we can just stir it up as we did before. Same as every mix always requires the hardener and a good stir beforehand. Give it a good mix up and then we can start to apply the resin. Now the best way is to start with your, your pipe detail first. So wet out your little squares. We're going to look at wetting them out and we're also going to make sure we wet out the pipe detail as well. So you're going to need your brush and your three inch roller to do this. So with your three inch roller what we're going to try and do is just literally get inside the pipe work, get it in, and then obviously you can use your brush as well to get it and wet it out. What we want to do is really wet all the matting, make sure you cover all the reinforcement matting, make sure there's no white patches, and give it a good coat of resin 
to fill any of them voided areas and get us a nice bond when we start to put these little squares on. So get all the way in the pipe, get it all nice and flush, get it all coated and then we can start to wet out the series of squares. So to do this just literally place them on either an off cutter board or on the valley area you're going to be wetting out and we just give that a decent coat and literally just put them over so it's half on the deck and half going into the pipe you can. Same again, don't worry about dressing it in as yet, give it time to soak up, give it time to break that matting down, so just place them where they need to be, overlapping as you go and then we can just soak each one up along the way. So just continue this all the way around the pipe. Continue every square, make sure you soak it up and then we can work them in. Same again, give it time to break down and put an extra one on that edge. Obviously there's going to be holding a lot of water, there's going to be a lot of water coming down on both roofs and any valley detail and then just leave that for the time being, let it soak up, let it break the binder down. So you always give it about a minute, two minutes if you can, and then you can literally get on it with your brush and dress it in. Should be okay to work in now at this stage. So start at your top, to bed it on. So give yourself a nice bed to work through, work it on, and then you can start to just dress that in. Just using your brush is the best way for this detail. So just dress it in. It will take some time just to break down but just keep working it in pushing it flat and you can move it to suit make sure you cover all them fixings so like so there there's a little fixing make sure you cover all your fixings and then work that in I always go over as well with a paddle roller and you can give it a little wash coat over the top as well but I will paddle roll it when I do me bandage work so your bandage is going to go over the top of that. Now don't worry about cutting it out, you can do if you want. But same again, we're going to make sure resin on the base. There's plenty of resin there. Roll your, roll your bandage out. And then coat that up again. So it's always resin, matte resin, as we did before. And then give that time to break down. Once it's broke down you can then start to paddle roll it. We're then going to just make sure we consolidate it. You want to get rid of all them fibres which we spoke about earlier on. Make sure you give it a good run off. Make sure you completely consolidate it. Give it roughly about four or five passes as you go. Go with the pipe work as well. And in it just makes it blend in more smoother. Working once it's once it's broken the binder down, we can then just go around the inside so we get a nice run off of water. No obstruction. We want to make sure the water dissipates straight through the outlet. So it's important. We do make it as flat as you can, and the power roller does this for us. It makes it nice and smooth, it blends everything in. Four to five passes, then again looking for them fibres to disappear and obviously it go nice and transparent as you can see. And then just finish off with your brush, any areas if you want to feather them in. As there one is enough really on any bandage work or detail work but I would always go over again with another, another bandage over them fixings especially on areas like box cutters or valleys with belt and braces approach really wherever you've got any heavy amounts of water you've got big surface water off both roofs coming to one area so just, like I say belt and braces approach really with two layers if you want but one is more than enough it is waterproof as long as you consolidate it right as you spoke about get it nice and clear so obviously as you can see from the trims they save a lot of time labour wise, you just run them out 
fix them down to your deck and obviously just bandage over them fixings so it's a lot easier than having to put kicker boards on and run your matting up and consolidate it or obviously a lot cheaper than lead etc so variations different works for it but obviously the trims and that flat sheet will bend and will form any pitch or roof you want and save you on time for valleys and dharma details well thanks again for tuning in for your masterclass obviously all these videos are available on our youtube channel and they are accessible on our curate web as well on our website they are available they're also on the download the app as well there's some uh, tutorial videos on there well thanks again to everybody who's done suggestions for the master classes and keep them coming in and whatever we get we will film in so if you've got any scenarios any issues you want covering you're more than welcome to, to fill that in for you and we'll, we'll obviously get it on get it live i hope they've all been informative for you and if say any questions you've got any queries you've got our technical help support there so send us an email or ring us up and we'll gladly assist you on any of uh, your projects.